tender memories. I mean, later on, I, I also remember um, going to see Muriel in a troupe of native dancers called the Thunderbird Dancers, and they were, it was a, it was a big show. Or was it, was that the one that was at Brooklyn College? Or was that one? No, no, that was, it, was a, it was a big theater, but saw a lot of different kinds of performance. Um, after Spider Woman was formed, I mean, in terms, in terms of inspiration and role models, in terms of this is how you do it, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that would be Spider Woman. But there are other folks in there too that I think came somewhat along with the things that in, in their training, they're like, I mean, certainly Joseph Chaikin and the, that kind of way of working was in there. Um, Samuel Beckett, I think, has been really influential for me, though the absurdists, uh, Edward Albee, and um, who's the one? I can't get this, uh, Ionesco. And I watched, I watched those open theater rehearsals as well, as Spider Woman rehearsals and Spider Woman workshops. So. And Murray Lewis, dancers, dancers like uh, Merce Cunningham and uh, Martha Graham, all of those people that kind of busted out. You know, they seem like kind of old hat now, but at the time, people who were, you know, those straight lines that Alan Nikolai was experimenting with and, and all that sort of the John Cage music and it was, it was really cutting edge and controversial when I was, when I was a little kid, that I grew up not thinking it odd or strange. And when I, when I went to university was also the time when teaching ensemble theater and collective creation was the norm. So I'd say that that is my, my bedrock of training, is that, that ensemble, that, that group energy, that creating things from the inside out. Yvette. Yes, Moni. <laughs> I had absolutely no business being in theater. Um, <laughs> my, my father is an, uh, an immigrant to this country, came from Ireland in the 50s and taught at residential school where he met my mother who was in residential school and um, married her and for the first six years of our, my life, which is, that's the only one that matters in this story, <laughs> we kind of moved around um, northwestern Ontario and Saskatchewan and and then we finally moved to the city when I was, to Winnipeg when I was six years old. And so I don't come from a performing family. I don't come from um, even, a, even anyone who's connected to, like truly connected to their culture. I mean, my father left Ireland. My mother had left her reserve when she was seven. And then we moved to Winnipeg and I was suddenly, I was suddenly in ballet classes at the Royal Winnipeg Ballet and in theater classes at Manitoba Theater Center uh, where the educator, the great uh, educator, Roberta Dolby, was a teacher at that point when I was just a child. And so all of my early stuff is really um, very like the Nutcracker. I mean, I've seen a hundred Nutcrackers. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in ballet until I was 14, so I thought maybe I'd be a ballerina, and then, you know, this is what I turned out like. <laughs> so no. Um, and maybe that's where I got diverted into theater. But it was all very much, uh, there was no other Indian child in ballet school. There was no other Indian child in um, either Manitoba Theatre Centre School or the Manitoba Theatre Workshop, uh, which happened later. And 
that I am that I remained in theater is some kind of a miracle because you're a 14 year old or a 15 year old girl in those classes and they're casting you in okay you'll do this this scene in the owl and the pussycat which doesn't make any sense um, but Winnipeg is a kind of an amazing place in terms of multi-dis and interdis and somehow I survived it um, and began to find my way to a group of artists who were, uh, if not, uh, making, making stories about our own voice. And at that point, our own voice to me meant Canadian and Manitoban and local. And um, it never even occurred to me that there was such a thing as Aboriginal theater until the Red Sisters appeared in town. And it was just such an illumination to me that there were a whole of these women on stage, Indian women. Um, yeah, I have no business being in theater. <laughs> All of my training up until very recently has been kind of the Western tradition. All of my heroes have been, you know, Judith Thompson and Shakespeare. I mean, everybody, we're getting sick of the Shakespeare, the Julius Caesar story. My mother and I watching Julius Caesar on television, the old CBC thing, and when we were both growing up together. And, and so Shakespeare played really early in my consciousness, and I would have to you know, retell and answer to my father what, what had happened in the story of Julius Caesar, <coughs> these things we watched on CBC, because that was our culture. CBC was it. If you live in Macintosh or Prince Albert or Sue Narrows, all places I have lived, that's what you get for culture, is the CBC. There's my plug for the CBC. <laughs> um, and it was apparently Bruno Gerussi in Julius Caesar. And my mother would ask my father what, ask me in front of my father what had happened that day in the, in the play. And I would tell, and then they killed Caesar. And she would say, and what did Caesar say? Tihi Brutus is the answer. <laughs> story now. Um, yes. Obviously, since then, everything has changed for me, and including you know, once I discovered this wealth of other um, people doing work that hooks back in our history, all of those doors have opened for me. So my inspirations over the past 10 or 15 years are Spider Woman, are Turtle Gals, are these, especially women, um, doing theater that harkens back to places we've come from before. But I'm just an egg in this, in this development because it's all been acquired for me in the very recent past. I'm learning all the time. It Go seems to be kind of a theme, though, starting <laughs> as a dancer and then ending up with the wrong body to keep being a dancer. I think yeah. that's happened to a but lot of people. But interesting, because well. we'll come back to dance, right? Okay, yeah, we'll come back yeah, to dance as, yeah, a, yeah. as a thing, like, what is native theater? We're so sick of that question. But, like, mm -hmm. coming back to the body mm -hmm. and, and what's in the body. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Jill. No, no, Alanis. I'm from uh, Waquamacong Unceded Indian Reserve on Manitoulin Island. It's about a six-hour drive away. And um, I think that all of my work since uh, 1986 has sort of uh, revolved specifically around uh, my roots of being a Anishinaabekwe, which is really the uh, Ojibwe, Odawa, Potawatomi uh, peoples, the nations there. And um, this land base that we're on right now here in Toronto, in fact, there's a, an outstanding land claim by the Mississauga people. And the Mississauga people, of course, are a branch off the Ojibwe. So um, uh, that's, uh, that's where really everything that I've done has come from. And uh, it's, it kind of drives me uh, as I look to the future. And anytime I've kind of tried to branch outside of my own specific nation or, or culture, it's always been a wrong, uh, wrong path. So I always get come back to uh, the Anishinaabe because it's something that I'm still exploring, and it's also something that's really, truly valuable to me and uh, allows for so many stories to come out. And now I just take it as, um, as things that land on, on the table sometimes. So one of my uh, 
one of my most recent projects is called Song of Hiawatha, and I wasn't familiar with this poem, and I didn't have to study it.